it does a excellent job you know garmin as a whole will always be a leader in that category and i think it's up to some other companies like apple watch to catch up and again take all those data so nice out here let's go for a run. The weather is really, really nice and cool. If we can bring this over to Chicago with us, that would be great. All right, everyone. So let's dive into my thoughts, opinions, the things that I like about this Epix Gen 2. So this is the titanium sapphire version. Essentially what that means is that there's a titanium watch bezel around the front and sapphire glass for that touch screen. The steel version comes with a steel bezel and then gorilla glass for the screen itself. A little bit less durable, a little more prone to scratching, things like that. So the titanium sapphire version is just a little bit more in that durability category. So what I've got with the Gen 2 Sapphire version out of the box is all maps included. The stainless steel version, you do need to download maps for the areas of interest. Uh, you don't have the, old, the whole world essentially preloaded onto the watch itself. Uh, I believe this is because there's a little bit less memory, so it just can't fit everything all together, all loaded at once. Uh, you do have additional GPS and satellite power with the Sapphire version as well, because you have access to dual band or multi-band GPS. I'll just say now that I do think uh, it's well worth the $100 extra for this watch to get the Sapphire version. Um, if even just for the memory and the satellite options, I think point of criticism about the Garmin Epix, the stainless steel version should come with that dual band GPS as well. That's just my opinion. I think it's an expensive watch as it is for the stainless steel version. You should get that multi-band GPS. So again, I'm not a tech reviewer. I'm not gonna dive super deep into a lot of the details of what this watch can do, all of its fitness metrics, all that kind of stuff, but I will give you a couple of points that I do really like about this watch as I've been using it for about nine months now. So the first thing I'll say that I'm really enjoying is this watch's durability. Uh, I've used this for trail racing, including some steep rock wall climbs, a pretty off the beaten path uh, you know, trail race. It really has been worn every single day of my life for the last nine months at this point. Uh, there's a few light scratches on the titanium bezel itself. Nothing that really bothers me, nothing that's too deep. This is a watch that I use, again, daily and like to do different activities with. I don't have any protective screen cover or bezel protector on here. I just use the watch as is and those light scratches will come, but honestly, it's not too bad and there's not a single scratch on the sapphire screen itself. And again, I'm using it out in the woods at times, climbing mountains, uh, different trail racing, things like that. So it's looking pretty good. Now, the next thing that I'm really enjoying is the battery life. Uh, I am somebody who has used an Apple Watch in the past, even the Series 7. I've had a Garmin Phoenix in the past as well, a Forerunner, which also have great battery life. So it's up to my standard, it does just fine. With this watch, I'm getting about six to seven days of battery life per charge, and that includes about five to six days running during marathon training, about an hour, hour average per activity, you know, two, three hour activities towards the tail end of this marathon training block. So again, those six to seven days are perfectly fine for me. It doesn't feel like I'm always needing to go and run and charge the watch. Honestly, when I notice it getting down to around 20%, I just put it on the charger when I'm gonna take a shower hour and it's generally ready by the time I'm all dressed and ready to go again. So again, the battery has been phenomenal for a Garmin watch with this AMOLED screen, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But again, six to seven days of battery life, plenty of time for me to go out and do activities, tons of time for even doing ultra marathons, ultra racing, backpacking for a, you know extended period of time. The battery will you know live up to most people's standards. 
Now, obviously, if you put on that multi-band GPS setting, which I do not have turned on most of the time, it will eat the battery just a little bit quicker. But let me just show you a quick sample of just a little path here in Beacon, uh, about five, you know, four or five story buildings, I'd say, in my area on Main Street. And you can see these little points that I highlighted where I truly crossed the street and it was able to see with that amount of accuracy where I did cross to one side of the street to the other. This is just a you know two direction road. So not that much difference in distance, but it pinpointed it pretty much perfectly. Um, and this is again, just with all systems on, not the dual band GPS. So you can see that's why I haven't even really had to turn it on. Only in really challenging conditions would I really turn on that dual band and use a little bit more battery life because it's been super accurate, even just with the all systems turned on. Again, no dual band, still this accurate out of the box. The next thing that I really appreciate and enjoy about this watch, and honestly why a lot of people are going for the Epix, is the screen itself. It's super bright, really vibrant, great color. This is because it's an AMOLED display. The Phoenix series uses a, something called MIPS screen. Uh, it's just a little bit different. Again, I'm not gonna go into super deep details and everything, but it relies a little bit more on sunlight for that color and vibrancy on the screen itself when you're outdoors. So it just is a little bit dimmer indoors. It doesn't have that pop of color like an AMOLED screen does. And this helps extend the Phoenix battery life. But again, I've been pretty happy with the Epix battery life as it is. So the screen is a really nice touch if you're someone who's coming from something like a Samsung or Apple Watch, you're really still gonna get that nice color and clarity from the screen to make you feel like you have a good smartwatch on your wrist, even if it's a little bit more focused as a fitness tracker versus smartwatch. So the screen overall, going through all these different widgets and things, super easy with the touch screen, really nice to look at with that color display. And um, again, the AMOLED, you know, just really a nice feature to have on a watch that still gets up to a week of battery when I'm using it as regularly as I do. Some people talk about how the Epix has trouble with the screen when you're in direct sunlight. Honestly, I can say that is completely false. I've run with this watch out in very bright days in the summer. There's never been an issue for me. I've even filmed the watch just at, you know, as I'm running to do vlogging, things like that. And I've never not been able to see the screen, even on camera, I've really never had a trouble seeing the screen. So even in direct sunlight, this watch screen is gonna be just fine. I think it's more people who are just saying that the Phoenix is better in direct sunlight, but it is true that the Phoenix again does better at seeing its own screen in direct sunlight, but that does not mean that the Epix is unviewable in direct sunlight. It's perfectly fine. You can still see everything you need to see. So the next thing I really appreciate about this watch is things like the data, and not just the data, but how it's packaged up and presented to you. This is really true for any Garmin watch that I've owned, and we'll keep this very general. Garmin does a wonderful job capturing many data points from your body and activity, and it takes all that important information a step further by turning it into meaningful data and information each day. It shows your training readiness, gives you a general idea of your body's energy levels with body battery, indicates productivity levels of your training. And I think from there, again, I'd say if you're interested in learning more about those items, more about those terms, check out a channel like DC Rainmaker, Desfit, Chase the Summit, or others. They're gonna do a little bit better of diving deep into that information, trust me. But again, the way that it packages all that data is very, very good. It does a excellent job. You know, Garmin as a whole will always be a leader in that category. And I think it's up to some other companies like Apple Watch to catch up and again, take all those data points that they also collect and package it into a meaningful fitness profile and training readiness or training productivity, uh, you know, snapshot. Something like that is definitely a step ahead in the Garmin world and a step behind in the Apple world. So the Epix for me is a great balance of features. Um, you know, let me just share a few final thoughts of what may send you in another direction when it comes to a fitness watch or just a smartwatch in general. The Apple Watch is a true and unbelievable smartwatch, but that's the keyword. It's a smartwatch, a smartwatch with fitness tracking capabilities that are pretty good, but it lacks that user interface where it turns collected data into a training or fitness profile or providing any kind of guidance. Um, Apple Watch also still greatly lacks that battery life. It you know barely makes it two days, even with the new Apple Watch Ultra, and it really couldn't track more than 16 to 20 hours of a GPS activity. Now, if you do want to take calls, respond to texts, see your watch and your wrist more as a miniature phone, then yes, again, you're going to lean in the direction of a smartwatch. I will just say, as someone who's had the Apple Watch even up to the Series 7, 
I was combining it with the Phoenix because I liked the screen, but I really didn't use the texting. I didn't use the calling. It just, I always had the phone with me. So why would I text on a tiny screen when I had the full size screen? It just really wasn't something that I was looking for. And in the end, when I switched over to the Epics, I got the screen I wanted, enough of the little widgets and fun things that you want out of this watch, but then still that deep dive into the full fitness profile and the benefit of wearing it all the time and collecting all that data daily. So if you're thinking fitness first, you're gonna wanna go with something like Garmin. There's other companies out there besides Garmin, but you're gonna lean in that direction over the Apple Watch. And uh, yeah, like I said, I just never really found myself fully using the smartwatch features with the Apple Watch. Now the last comparison, I'll just say, if you need even more battery life and the screen isn't 100% something that you are super interested in or worried about, then you'll wanna step into something like the Phoenix. You know, you could go backpacking, do activities and things for weeks on end, that battery will not die. <laughs> and you know, if that's something that's important to you, that is the best fitness tracker out there for that really long battery life or really extended activity world um, that I'm honestly just not a part of but that's a direction you're gonna go, again, if you just want more battery life. But I do really feel that the Garmin Epix is a great middle ground, tons of battery life for like 90% of the population, and again, a great screen just to look nice on your wrist and make it interesting and appealing when you're messing around with the settings, looking at widgets like weather, looking at widgets like your body battery, your HRV, all those other things, just look really nice if you wanna check it on your wrist. Uh, ultimately, I think this is the favorite you know, of a fitness watch that I've ever had. It really just combines a whole world of different things into one item and that's awesome. And again, I really would recommend the Sapphire and Titanium version really more for the maps and the GPS multiband availability. The additional Sapphire glass is nice, but I really just think those extra little features for an extra hundred dollars make the Sapphire worth it if you're already spending a lot of money on a you know high-end fitness watch. Um, other than that, I'm going to be preparing to fly out to Chicago for the marathon this weekend. So definitely subscribe down below if you want to follow that journey. And also I'll be running the New York City Marathon just four weeks after the Chicago Marathon. I'll have my camera with me sharing the course and everything. So definitely subscribe and follow along again if you want to track those two things. Also, give me a thumbs up if you've made it this far. And uh, just again, I really appreciate everybody watching, liking, and commenting. With that, I hope to see you all in the next video.